Yeah, when, Wednesday, September 17th of 2008 may be the worst day for me uh, throughout the whole financial crisis. And, and that's kind of hard because there were there's a lot of contenders for that that title. It, it was a, it, it, a number of days stick out, but this day really sticks out. For one thing, it would have been my, my late father's 60th birthday. He was born September 17th, 1948, and he had passed away in 1995. But this, uh, I woke up already really under this tremendous anxiety of everything that had been going on. And then, you know, there's always that kind of personal and sentimental attachment you understand around loss of dad and so forth. And so it's just kind of a, an emotional day to begin with. Um, but then uh, the bottom really fell out in markets. I mentioned that we had had a little bit of a recovery rally on the Tuesday after the colossal drop on Monday. And then it all accelerated again on that Wednesday. And rumors were flying that Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs were next. Uh, so any particular firm at that point having new problems, it was exacerbating the drama we were dealing with in capital markets and credit markets in the stock market, uh, in the economy, you know, everything going on, the housing market, there are all these tensions there. But the fact that one of the particular companies that was in the bullseye this day being Morgan Stanley was the company I worked for at the time. So now I, you have to deal with clients that are worried about the market, worried about the value of their assets, worried about their homes, worried about their income. And oh yeah, it, what about the solvency of my own firm? Um, and, and there was a vicious uh, effort of short sellers that were going after Morgan and Goldman. They now, at this point, nobody believed anything any of the financial firms were saying for good reason about their own liquidity and about their own solvency. Um, and, and so throughout the day, I believe Morgan had dropped about 25% that day. Goldman may be similar. I think they both rallied a little bit near the end of the day. Um, but it was just a brutal and exhausting day. And, and ultimately this didn't happen on that actual day, but, um, by that weekend, both Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs changed their businesses forever. They became bank holding companies which was a whole new classification, a whole new regulatory uh, paradigm they were subjecting themselves to. Uh, but it enabled them to access a deposit base like a regular commercial bank that could be used as a funding mechanism in the way they administered their company, as opposed to relying on overnight repo markets, which had completely dried up. And a lot of, bank, a lot of investment banks were relied on, most notably Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, Morgan Stanley was a huge uh, 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 user of the repo markets overnight, and now they had to totally change their funding mechanisms. Uh, they also ended up uh, selling a very significant piece to Mitsubishi, a large Japanese bank, after trying and failing to do a couple other transactions. Uh, Goldman Sachs ended up doing a, um, a preferred convertible deal with Warren Buffett at a large coupon so you had you had a number of um, significant transactions taking place just to keep these firms afloat, uh, but Wednesday, September seventeenth, there was a high amount of drama uh, in our own conference room. We were uh, at, the, at myself in leadership position at the firm was involved in some conference calls uh, that had scared me to the bone about where things were and where they were headed and. Uh, ultimately, I do believe the leadership of John Mack, the CEO at the time, and his refusal to do a couple of deals that were in front of him that would have allowed the world to keep on turning but would have completely wiped out the shareholders of Morgan Stanley or very near wiped out. Um, I think it was, a, a, in hindsight, an act of some heroic leadership by Mr. Mack. But, of course, the firm itself had had put themselves in a position of just total disarray and and now uh, a lot of us on the senior wealth management side, we're going to have to kind of deal with the the consequences of that as it pertained to our wealth management clientele. But that was the job. That's what we had to do. And um, I got home that night, and uh, the I guess if that had been the extent of it, it would have been bad enough. But um, this thing was nowhere near done. And, and here we were just a few days after Lehman had gone down and Lehman was gone and AIG was gone and Merrill Lynch was gone and there was significant questions of the viability of Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs and 
wasn't even Thursday yet. 